As parents, we love watching our kids win awards and telling our friends about all of their achievements, but there's something far more important than that. Actually, even more important than what college they're going to go to or if they go to college. And it's a hard lesson to learn and one that I'm reflecting on now that my daughter is getting ready to graduate high school. Welcome to Working Mom Warrior, the channel that gives you stories and tips to help you feel a sense of calm, confidence, and clarity. I'm Diane Mocha. This is my vlog. I'm out on my bike ride, as you can probably see. So I'm taking a little time because my new uh, habit is to try to do a quick video every day, giving you some insight into all the things that I'm thinking about and learning about in my parenting journey. And as I just mentioned, my daughter is getting ready to graduate high school. My son is in college. I've been a parent for 20 years. And I am so proud of all the things that both of my kids have done. But there is something far more important than their accomplishments and my pride. And it's a very tough lesson that our family learned over the past year and a half. My daughter has always been a super overachiever, like myself. I'm afraid she probably gets it from her mom. I'm always very hard driving. I'm always looking for the next goal and the next success. And I evaluate myself a lot in what I'm accomplishing, but I love what I do. I try to work on projects that really fulfill my passion and a purpose. And my daughter, from when she was very young, used to say that her goal was to be a veterinarian. She uh, wanted to get all the best grades and go to college and get into vet school, which is super competitive, but it was uh, something that she had her eyes on for a very long time. But now that she is getting ready to go to college, she is not going to study veterinary medicine. She's going to study business. And I am very glad about this because when I looked in to the whole pursuit of veterinary medicine, especially after she started expressing some doubts about going into it, I realized it's really a pressure cooker environment like so many very competitive fields. And that environment is fraught with all kinds of stresses on the kids and even the parents who are watching the kids go through this. And while business, of course, has lots of failures and pressures as well, um, I think that you can define your success in a different way in business than you can when you are subject to the whims of the people who are deciding if you get into the few select vet schools or not. So how do I know that business is the right thing for her? Well, I can tell you that she has been an entrepreneur at heart her whole life. When she was about seven years old, she came up with this idea for a company and called it uh, you know, her paper creations and her grandfather helped her set up a website where she displayed them. She didn't sell any of them, but she did eventually get a sewing machine from her grandpa and grandma and her grandma taught her how to use it and she learned how to sew little purses that she did sell to her friends. But she wasn't selling enough of those and she wanted to branch out into something more related to animals. She um, has a strong love of animals just like her other grandma and she uh, started to nurture this idea of having a worm farm and these worms multiplying and selling them and she in fact did get the worm farm but they didn't make it and then she went into frogs and oh my gosh we had a house full of frogs croaking loudly every night keeping us awake we literally had containers full of frogs all over our family room finally we had to tell the kids to get rid of them my brother uh, her brother my son and my daughter had caught these frogs over the course of a summer we called it the summer of frogs and we literally had a couple dozen but that business no wasn't the success she wanted it to be either and so I never encouraged or discouraged these um, entrepreneurial journeys of hers I just went along for the ride but then she decided she wanted to start teaching people making money in the service industry and I did help her with that I put out an ad on Craigslist and helped her to find tutoring jobs. She was only 11, 12 years old and she was making $15 an hour tutoring younger kids in English and math. And eventually she started teaching music. She's a very talented musician, just like her dad, my husband. And she knows how to play piano and clarinet and sing. And she started teaching these skills to younger kids as well. And at one point when she was a teenager, she was making $40 an hour teaching other kids. I was driving her to the various locations for her to teach these lessons 
and and I was glad to do it. So I see that an entrepreneurial journey for her is going to be a very exciting thing. And she's always done very well in school. I feel strongly that she'll excel in college as long as she stays on track with balancing the other things in her life. So she got to a point where not only was she doing all of these separate little side projects that she used to say were her own companies, but she was super involved in a lot of extracurricular activities like I was when I was a kid and like her brother was. And so she was involved in multiple bands at school, playing piano and jazz band, playing clarinet and school band. She was in lots of sports, um, youth leagues for soccer and basketball and baseball. She was involved in a lot of school plays and musicals. She performed at talent shows. She took lessons herself, private lessons for piano and singing. And of course she was taking all honors classes. When she got to high school she was taking AP classes and she tried out for even more things in high school. She decided she wanted to be part of a team so she tried out for color guard and winter guard and got on those teams and was on the speech team. When she was in junior high she was super involved with the chess team. She actually got invited to join the chess team when she was only eight years old. It was a junior high chess team with seventh and eighth grade boys and she helped to lead that team to championships four of the five years she was on it. So she was uh, extremely involved in a lot of activities and my husband and I were super proud and excited to go and watch all of these things and her um, performances and her recitals and all of these accomplishments. And we wanted to share in all of the joy that she had for these activities but in high school when it was every single night until nine o'clock at night and then having to wake up every morning at eight in the morning to start with her school day and when is she going to squeeze in homework she would collapse on the couch at nine at night after being at school all day and all night with activities then she would wake up at midnight and expect to do three hours of homework and then fall asleep again at 3 a.m. and then try to get up at 7 a.m. it was crazy I told her you can't sustain this let's drop some things no I can handle it all she kept insisting I love it all I don't want to drop anything I have to do all of it so in her junior year she went on an overseas trip with the marching band she came home she had one week to tackle and what seemed to be an insurmountable amount of deadlines for school before she was leaving on another trip over the weekend with her thespian troupe and she suddenly couldn't get out of bed the day they had to go to school to, to get on the bus for the trip. She was also supposed to turn in all of her various assignments that day. And not only could she not get out of bed that day, but the next day and the next day. And I was becoming very concerned. This was more than just exhaustion or even overload. And it started us on a journey for months of going to doctors, of her going in and out of hospital programs. I learned a ton about mental illness and the mental health industry. A lot more than I wish I had to learn, but when your child goes through this, you jump in and you figure out how to try to um, make things better or just give her what she needed and nobody seemed to know. Everyone was trying different therapies, different medications, nothing was helping. We were very, very scared. There was a while I wasn't sure she was going to graduate. I wasn't sure she was going to make it. and. I never gave up and I always believed that um, she would find a way but it was a very dark period and looking back on it now I realized that I was focused so much on achievements and accomplishments and awards I wasn't really thinking about her happiness and her joy and her laughter. She didn't seem unhappy, but she said that she felt that she probably had depression for a while. She had indicated to me that she just didn't feel a strong connection to her friends and that she wanted to make a new group of friends, um, be welcomed into a new group of friends, meet a new group of friends. And that's not an easy thing to do in high school. High school is a very precarious time for so many kids. But she spent many months um, in and out of a lot of hospital and doctor programs, didn't really do much schoolwork or go back to school, failed out of classes, and I wasn't even worried about school at that point. I just wanted her to find herself and find something that would bring her joy again in life because it was gone. The spark um, seemed to be gone from her for life. And 
It took many months and a lot of trial and error and many different programs and medications. Eventually, um, the doctors hit on three different medications that they stuck with and she started opening up a little to a particular therapist and psychiatrist and she connected with a group of friends who really cared about her unconditionally and welcomed her in and experienced some of the same things themselves. And then she started singing and playing at the piano again, something she used to do almost every day, pop songs from the radio, whatever she could learn. But this time she was singing and playing songs I didn't recognize. And then we were to discover that she was writing songs. And the songs just started pouring out of her like a tsunami. She literally wrote three, five, eight, 10, 12. At this point, it's probably more than 15 songs that she's written since last fall. She um, went to meetings with the school. We set up um, special programs for her to be able to get back into the school environment and be able to do her schoolwork. And she finished some classes online, finished some in the school. Then eventually everyone came home to finish online, which she was fine with. And the graduation was canceled, but she did earn enough credits to graduate. And her school is going to hold a ceremony next week, a drive up ceremony. So we're very excited after all that she went through to know that she made it through high school. Not only did she make it through, but she eventually got the will to take the ACT and the SAT. And I had a lot of confidence that she would do well on those tests. She did no preparation at all. She said she didn't even know if she could concentrate that long because she hadn't done any schoolwork or tests or concentrating like that in months. And she did phenomenal. She, she exceeded our uh, expectations and she got accepted to five colleges she eventually um, got it together applied to colleges and one of the colleges gave her a merit-based scholarship that will cover her tuition for all four years but the most important thing through all of this is not that she got back on track and she's accomplishing all these things again and she's successful. We're proud of her, we're happy. We know that that will help put her on a path to success. But the path to success is meaningless if she's not happy. And I am so relieved when I hear people tell me a story like her boss, she got two jobs as a cashier at two different restaurants last summer. And her boss said to me when she first started with us, she just never smiled. And now it's so great to see her come in and smile. And she seems that the joy has come back in her life. She loves spending time with her friends. Those friends are so meaningful to her. So I tell you, no matter what phase of parenting you are in, focus first on the joy, the friendships that your children need to thrive, the happiness that your family can have no matter what you have no matter what success you have or don't have, no matter what amount of money you have or don't have. I know, believe me, I know, it can be very hard and stressful when you don't have enough money to pay the bills, when you feel like you're struggling financially. But you can always find reasons for laughter. You can always spend time with your children doing things that cost no money. And while happiness does not put food on the table, I recognize that, it is a key ingredient in everyday life. So I encourage you to nurture that happiness. And if you believe that your children are starting to lose that feeling of joy for life, even if they're accomplishing so much and seem like everything is doing okay, check in with them and make sure to get them help if they need it. And reach out to other mothers. My motto on this channel is to spread a little of your own love to another mom who needs it. We may not be able to do that with hugs right now, but you can do it by calling a mom, making an appointment to see them virtually or at an outdoor cafe, something to let others know that you want to help encourage their happiness in their life and their family's lives too.